All right, so 11.05, we'll get started. Um, it won't be too much of a long uh, presentation today. Um, I just wanted to really uh, give a shout out uh, about our uh, one of our surveying solutions um, for underground mining that really, uh, it kind of improves the workflow uh, for, for underground mining surveying. Um, so, uh, you know, if people are not aware that we do provide and we do training on um, so I'll get started on, I'll get started on this right away. Um, if you guys have any questions, by all means, send it in the chat or, uh, raise your hand, Just raise hand option on your, um, and, uh, I'll definitely answer some questions. So let's get started. So I will be presenting the monopod system today. So my name is Stefan Roy. I've been with, uh, or sorry, I've been in the mining industry for just over five years. Um, I've bounced around between engineering and consulting firms. Uh, excuse me. I worked for contractors. Um, I was an underground surveyor. Um, personally, I did not use the system, but as an underground surveyor, um, I can definitely see the benefits of uh, what the system can do. Um, so far, I've been with NSS for just over three and a half years, um, and my title here is the uh, Mining and Engineering Account Manager. So I deal with uh, pretty much all the total stations, uh, GPS systems, uh, high definition scanners. So that's below and above solutions for uh, stove scanning, um, as well as our serving solutions, uh, which would be um, the monopod system as well as the wall prism system for resectioning. So as you can see here, we do a lot more than just total stations and GPS. Um, we have pretty much uh, any engineering solution, uh, any measurement solution uh, that you can think of. So nice little list, uh, quick list of who currently trusts uh, Leica equipment. Um, I'll tell you right now, the list is not getting shorter. Uh, it's only it's only getting longer. Um, so these are some quick uh, quick clients that we uh, deal with almost on a daily basis. All right. So so uh, for you who so for the people who are currently on this meeting, um, you may be asking, what is the monopod system? So uh, essentially, the monopod system is used for uh, mining advancement. Um, it's also used for a uh, check surveying. Um, it's a convenient way. Uh, give me a second here. Uh, um, it's a convenient way to replace uh, uh, the back and wall smoke marks. So essentially known as lining grade when you're underground. Um, and it's uh, there's two types of uh, applications. So you have the drop in uh, the drop in type as well as the resin type. Um, from cross section, they pretty much look the exact same. It's the installation uh, that really differs. Uh, the two systems. So as you can see here, um, just so I can show you guys quickly, you have the wall bar that's permanently into, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, guys. Uh, just got noticed that we are having some difficulties. Um, one second here. There, so I saw my video. Hopefully, uh, the bandwidth allows me. Um, we're just testing out to make sure things are going well. Nobody's showing up to say I'm doing well. So we'll see if things uh, go well for now. Um, if there, if you guys do have difficulty hearing me, uh, by all means, uh, please let me know through the chat, or um or uh, just raise your hand or something, and I'll definitely try and uh, repeat or talk slower. Um, so like I said, so the monopod system, um, so if you guys look at this picture here, it's a nice little cross section of essentially how it's working. Um, so you have the anchor, which is a bronze bar here. It's actually, that's permanently installed into the wall. Um, it's also known as a control point because it's surveyed in um, um, it's drilled right into the rock face. Um, it's got a threaded brass insert, uh, so you can use it with Hilti epoxy, but we also have a new system that you don't have to use epoxy anymore. Um, this is the top view of the monopod that's 
currently sitting right here. So the top view has a 5.8 screw to allow uh, one of our um, uh, total stations to be mounted on there. Um, I do want to give a fair warning that uh, not any total station will uh, successfully work on the monopod. The reason of is because there's a set height from the base plate to the center of the rectangle. Um, and this has to be stay, this has to uh, be kept consistent through any instrument being put on there, um, which we have a big list. It's not tightened down to just a couple of instruments, all, all like instruments plus a couple, uh, a couple more instruments um, does work on this monopod system. We have your solution for it. So basically, how convenient um, is the monopod system? So traditionally, um, when you are surveying, a surveyor or a miner will have to use string, spads in the back, or even in the wall. Um, some mines actually just do screws in the wall, so this could be replaced with screws. Um, you, so miners typically attach these washers to the string to uh, stand back and, and get their lining grade. Um, and you got missing plugs and missing smoke marks, but guess what, guys? You're actually getting rid of all of those. You're getting rid of your string, uh, blown out smoke marks, you're missing gray plugs, you're getting rid of all of, all of that, and you're relying pretty much on a solid brass anchor uh, painted into the wall. So I'll show you guys this quick video, um, and it'll explain really uh, a great uh, it'll be a great tutorial on how the monopod system uh, is installed. So for things first, we drill a one inch diameter hole into the wall um, using a healthy gun. Um, typically about deep. Uh, eight to ten inches deep is what, uh, what is required. Um, and then we were able to uh, insert the monopod. So right now we're showing you the uh, pound in or the drop in anchor. Um, there's also the resin anchor that just requires glue and then you simply just push in the anchor. Uh, but this system here that we're installing um, has a pin in the back, which I'll show you later, which opens up kind of like a mechanical bolt um, and it locks into the wall. So what Frank is installing here now is the monopod. Um, and what's really helpful here is that there's two little grooves on it uh, for a miner's wrench. So you can really tighten that down, um, tighten that into the wall, and then he'll release the latch for the uh, base plate, which you can level the base plate up. Just a nice little eye level there. We'll tighten that up. And then the next step is to put the total station on. You just rotate the tri brack you screw it on, and you continue with your serving duties. So like I said, um, there's a couple installation types that we have. Um, so we, one of our main ones would, uh, is called the resin. The resin type. So the way the resin type works is the exact same way as the other uh, the other uh, installation type, which is the drop in. Um, the only key difference is uh, it requires resin rather than uh, pounding it in. So uh, same thing, you would drill a one inch hole about eight inches deep. Um, it requires quick set resin, um, which we can supply, um, and it works pretty much just like a resin bolt. So it has its grooves uh, locked in there. So Basically, the resin will catch it and lock it into place. Um, it's one of the more stable methods. Um, the only downside is that it has a longer installation time. Um, one, because it's a little bit deeper of a hole that you have to drill. Um, two is because you kind of have to wait there for the resin to dry. Usually, it's about a 10-minute wait time. Um, and it's a bit more costly, uh, costly on the side that you have to purchase uh, this extra resin. Um, and resin does expire, so you have to make sure you purchase the right amount of product or most of it will be, uh, will be chucked out. So basically on those, those two notions, we kind of came up with this new uh, installation type um, called the drop-in anchor. 
So like I said, it's the exact same thing. Um, it's the exact same size of hole, uh, except a little bit uh, less, uh, a little bit uh, more shallow. So in, instead of eight inches deep, you're looking at about a seven inch deep anchor. Um, it's hammered in instead, uh, instead, of a, uh, instead of resin. So it basically locks itself into the rock, it, just like a mechanical bolt. Um, so the back actually opens up. So you, if you guys can see these little grooves, um, these are actually kind of like, um, I'm going to say like fish scales or they're, they're scales that when this whole back part will open up, this pin is actually sitting in here, it'll open up um, and then lock itself into the, uh, into the rock. Um, it's more stable or it's stable in hard rock mines. It's not something that we'd recommend for soft rock mines because it's, uh, um, it, it's soft rock. Um, it has a quick install time um, as well as it's less costly because there's no resin to be purchased. The only consumable um, is obviously the anchor, but the only consumable on top of that would be your installation, uh, your, uh, installation uh, tool here, which is what goes into the sleeve to, uh, to pound the, uh, I'm going to call it the bullet, to pound the bullet back to really open up the, uh, the backside. So essentially, how do you use it or how is it used? Um, so like I said, for the miners, it's used for lead and grade. Uh, so the miner essentially installs the instrument on the monopod. Um, and uh, the second step would be to really uh, to point the instrument to a back site and zero the instrument. Um, from there, uh, he turns to the angle that's notified on the prints, which right here we have an example of 82 degrees. Um, and then from there, he starts marking on the face, uh, the measurements on the, uh, on the prints. I have a slide just uh, a couple of slides away that will we'll dive a bit, a bit more into detail uh, on, this whole, uh, on this whole chart. Um, but surveyors can also use it. So the way surveyors would use it, uh, it would be essentially it would be used for a control. Um, the surveyors would basically install the instrument and then level it. Uh, points, point the instrument to a backside and set up on an orientation or simply a resection. Um, and then they would just simply continue with their surveying duties. So uh, the surveyors would take care of the monopod advancement. So at every uh, couple of rounds or every, uh, you know, every advancement, um, they would install a new monopod um, and then tie it into their mind control. Uh, the way to do this is with the leapfrog method. Um, if I can quickly explain that, that's just having the total station on one monopod, uh, basically having uh, a, a prism in the on a, um, a prism on a foresight and a prism on a backsight, um, and you're just tying in all the prisms. Uh, you're shooting them in basically, and you're tying all the prisms together. Um, your then they they be able to continue with uh, point and line measurements and point and line stakings and etc. Um, if they have to stake diamond drill holes or uh, ITH holes or anything like that, they can do it right off a monopod. They wouldn't have to carry a tripod if they knew uh, where they were going specifically. So uh, for just to, just to give you guys really a quick uh, print example of um, how the uh, monopod system works. So if we can use this example, so basically the miner would show up and install the monopod on the station 1148, which if you guys can see on my laser dot, it's right here, control point right down here. Um, next, the miner would pay, uh, turn to the back site. So the back site could be pretty much anything uh, that's, that's uh, relatively marked. So it could be a pin, it could be another control point, it could be uh, a marking on the wall. Um, it just has to be a reference point because once the miner turns to this reference point, um, he's going to have to essentially zero out the instrument. Uh, so basically go into the settings. Um, we send you a guide for all this, but basically go into the settings and just uh, put the angular, uh, the angular turn on zero, zero, zero. Um, and then on the print here, it's uh, telling the miner, now you have to turn 82 degrees and 29 minutes. So the miner would essentially turn the instrument, 82 degrees and 29 minutes. Um, and right on the face from the laser, he'll start uh, basically giving the offsets. So this, uh, this chart here is basically saying, now the back 
is 2.2 meters up um, and the sill is 2.1 meters below. So he would start uh, painting all this uh, right from the laser mark. Um, and on the face, uh, he would go left 1.2 uh, meters and then right uh, 3.5 meters and uh, paint all that on the face. Um, every round, there's a new print uh, being printed uh, with new offsets because obviously the rounds are changed, or sorry, the, uh, the, the print on the face is changing. So every round, there'll be new measurements to be taken into consideration um, and uh, you'll be able to go on from there. And like I said, it was nice, quick and short. Um, and that's the end of my presentation. Um, so like I said, we do sell the system. We have everything in stock um, and uh, we're active, uh, we're active on training, it, training on it as well. Um, so if there's any questions, by all means, my email and my cell phone number are right there or I'm open to questions right now if there's anybody, uh, anybody willing to ask. Oh, I got something in the chat here. So Yvon asked, is the resin works in sub-zero temperatures? Um, I will have to actually look up. Uh, I'm going to write that down. Thanks for the, uh, thanks for the note there, uh, Yvon. I believe it does. Um, it's just the drying time on the resin just takes a little bit longer to, uh, to set. So you might be work, you might be waiting uh, another 15, or sorry, you might be waiting up to 15 to 20 minutes. Um, but I will double check to get you an exact spec on what the, uh, what the resin uh, drying uh, temperature is. Great question, though. thank you. Hey Steph, in, in my past using the resin um, in, uh, in that kind of temperature uh, at, at a portal, for example, in January in Metachuan, uh, it took the resin almost 24 hours. So we ended up having to go to the hammering approach for that uh, for that side, and then once we got further down uh, down the portal and then into some warmer climate, we were able to go to the resin. So it's just a matter of working on both, depending what the temperature is. It just it has a very long time setting time. Perfect. Thank you for the feedback, Bruno. So uh, like yeah, like exactly like I mentioned earlier. So there's a lot of uh, mining applications or mining environments that really don't allow. Um, or it's really not the best practice to use a, a resin anchor. So um, this is the reason why we really came up with the whole drop-in method is because now you don't have to wait for the resin to set. Um, some people I actually even got faulty resin where they put the resin in and it didn't even dry at all. So they, do, they would have to uh, basically pull out the plug, clean out the hole and put in, uh, put in new resin. So the drop-in anchor, we've never had uh, many issues with it. Um, these, these little kinks, but those are easily worked out. Um, the resin, the resin, uh, that's, that's the issue sometimes is that the resin doesn't work uh, or the resin just simply doesn't dry or just takes too long to dry. Um, so for, again, for the, a lot of mining applications, it's always best uh, to use a drop-in anchor uh, for the monopod system. I don't see anything. All right. Um, well, if there's no more questions, thank you very much for attending my uh, webinar. So the next webinar will be from Ben Rantala. Um, he'll be explaining uh, Cloudworks, uh, the Cloudworks plugin for all your favorite HDS softwares. Um, so basically how to import your com complex projects uh, into uh, you know, your favorite softwares um, and how the Cloudworks plugin works. Um, so if you have any questions, my email is right there. Um, and my cell phone number, give me a shout and I'll be able to help you out.